right? Yes, Miss Daniela. I'm Caroline Akao. Please take off your cap here in court. Who are you to do, maybe? I'm her nanny, Miss Daniela. You may be here reported a case against you. She said you've been feeding her with bad food, junk as she calls it. According to her, this is because she don't know how to cook. She also said she wants to cook for herself, but you wouldn't let her. What do you have to say in your defense? Miss Daniela, I have been her nanny for years. I have been cooking what the entire family eats. So why the change all of a sudden? She claims she wants to prepare her food for herself, but she's too young for that. She's clueless about what to cook and how to cook. Why would I allow her cook when she would only burn down the house? Finding a job is very difficult, and I can't afford to lose this one, Miss Daniela. I see. So tell us, you maybe, how old are you? I'm 10 years old. Have you ever cooked before? No. And you think cooking is like dressing a toy? By your words, I doubt if you can even cook. Why don't you step down from that high horse and take lessons from me? Really? Interesting. Let's face the matter at hand first. You said you want this court to allow you cook your own food, right? Yes. That would be the right thing to do. That will be my decision to make. Caroline, do you have any request to make? Yes, Miss Daniela. I wish to continue preparing her meal so as to monitor what she eats and the nutrients she gets from it. Fine. We'll find the deciding factor. Now, I want to be fair to you because even Caroline doesn't know how great a cook you are. Show us what you can prepare. Once the food is tasty, I promise you'll be your own cook henceforth. Now let the test begin. I can't wait to showcase my excellent culinary endeavor. What? I mean my cooking skills. A judge like you, yet you're clueless of simple cooking terms. How sad. Please proceed. Show us what you can do. This is beginning to look like a setup. I'm sure Miss Daniela is up to something. She wants me to fail. But no, you can do this maybe. Let's go, Chef. So, what have you decided to prepare? I know there are cases lined up for today, not to waste the court's time with any serious dish. Noodles will do just fine. <laughs> fine, then go ahead. With everyone here, no way. I don't share my recipe with anyone. I would like to cook in private. Very well then, the court will go on recess while you cook and we will be tasting your food when the court resumes. By the way, there will be a guard with you, just in case. Good luck. All rise. What about onions is really a sadist.
enjoy the food. No need to thank me. I'm that nice. Good. Let's taste the food and decide. By who? By you, of course! Seal the entire court! No one leaves or goes out until the corporate is apprehended! This is my judgment! Please hold on, Miss Daniela. Give me a chance to say something before you give your judgment. What? I withdraw this case. She wins. Caroline, can we go home now? I'm starving. I need to go home and rest. I've overworked myself today. Court! Everyone rise so Miss Daniela can rise too. Huh? Get up now! Security! Not so fast. So maybe things don't work that way. Why on earth would you want to start cooking your own food? Is that necessary? You have to answer my question or I will have you punished. It's my classmates. They always laugh at me saying that I can't do anything by myself. That my nanny does everything for me. So I decided to try my hands out on cooking, but she would not allow me. So I brought her here to get permission from you. If you wanted to learn how to cook, you would have asked Caroline to teach you, or stick around whenever she's cooking and not dragging her to court. What she did is wrong and you have to apologize to her. It's Daniela. It's losing not bad enough. Do you have to humiliate me? If you could humiliate Caroline by dragging her to court, then you have to face same by apologizing. Please, Miss Nanella, she doesn't have to. I'm her nanny. Yes, and you are there to take care of her and teach her good manners. And by so doing, she will in turn respect and obey you. So are you ready to apologize or get punished? Uh-uh. Is it not simple, sorry? Auntie Caroline. Sorry, sorry. Now can we go? <clears throat> Henceforth, I do not wish to hear any complaint about you again. Are we clear? Very clear. Good. I hereby discharge and acquit Caroline. And I pardon you maybe for being naughty. This is my judgment. All right. Next case, please. The next case is the case of Chimeze Maji versus Oki Maji. Chimeze has accused his elder brother of being the reason he failed his assignment and wants the court to have him punished. May Chimeze Maji please take his stand in the witness box. So, Chimeze Maji, tell this court what your complaint is against Oki Maji. 
Miss Danuela. Okay has wronged and hurt me badly. He made me fail my assignment and all my classmates laughed at me. I'm not used to failing. I see. Is okay Madre in court? Okay Madre, you should please take a stand in the witness box. You're okay Madre, right? Yes, Miss Daniela. You've heard your brother's accusation. What do you plead? Not guilty, Miss Daniela. What do you mean by not guilty? Did not make me fail? Simple assignment you could not do as an elder brother. I thought you were intelligent, but now I know our parents have just been wasting their money on you. No, just see who is talking. Take a look at yourself. You're the intelligent one, right? So why need to hand your assignments yourself since you know more than I do? Why? I was just busy at the time. I also wanted to give a chance to prove you passed through this level while in primary school. But now I know better. You probably bribed your way through it. Look at this empty brain. I wonder why our parents think you can amount to anything in life when you cannot even do your own assignments. Enough! You both have said enough. This is my court and I ask the questions here. Let's go for a tea break. The court resumes in 10 minutes. So tell me, okay, why did you have to do your brother's assignments? Because from what I gathered, he's still in primary school. Yes, my parents insisted that I assist him whenever he does his assignments. He never liked to do his assignments. And our parents kept insulting me that I'm the reason. I did what I did on purpose, so he will fail and learn his lesson and also give me a break. Really? This is not the first time he has stopped doing his assignments. Because he has got used to thinking that I'll always be there to do it for him. So I became tired because I felt I was not helping him. And he will fail eventually because I would not write his exams for him. I would not. So you intentionally made him fail? Yes. Did you hear him? Did you hear him? He failed me on purpose. He must be punished. He is wicked. Objection! Objection sustained. I wasn't talking to you, Chimedi. And you were not supposed to speak. Why? I brought this case here. I see. So tell me, Chimeze, why would you refuse to do your own assignment? You are the one in school. Why should OK be taking care of your homework? What is the need of having an elder brother? If I would not have him helping me with my assignments, all my classmates have people who help them with their assignments. So why would my own case be different? Why did you agree to go to school in the first place if you needed someone to do the work for you? Well, I never asked anyone to help. My parents did because they believe someone should. Miss Danuela, I'm just supposed to be a lucky child. What's my crime in that? Are you accusing your parents? Can we go back to the issue at hand? I need, okay, punished for this! <sighs> and if I may ask, what's this punishment? Thank you, Miss Danuela. One. He will do all my assignments going forward. Two, he will share all his pocket money with me. Lastly, he will do anything I ask him to do for the next few months. That's all I ask of this honorable God. Wow, that's really nice to hear. And if I may ask, what should be your own punishment? Why should I be punished? I brought this case here and I have done nothing wrong. That's wrong, Chimizie. Bringing their case to court doesn't make you the winner. You will only win if you are right. Well, before my judgment, I'll ask your parents some questions. Oh, why drag my parents to this? You need their parents to punish him. Trust me, they won't mind. That's my call, not yours. I will decide that. After having a word with your parents, I gather that they have failed in their duties as parents. Oki has been doing his brother's assignment just to please your parents, while they continue paying his tuition through grades. Oblivious of the fact that he is dependent on others for his every school. Excuse me, Daniela. What are you saying? This is cheating. You are setting me up rather than fighting for me. 
Is this how you treat kids you brought to you here and bad judgment? What do you mean? Since you spoke with my parents, you should have told them the punishment and make sure OK obeys and what to do to him if he doesn't. You seem to know my job more than I do. <laughs> Why don't you apply for this position? <laughs> Funny. Parents should know that raising their children in the right way is their responsibility. Mandating OK to do Chimese's assignment is wrong and blaming him for his failure. But Miss Danuela, they say your homework is to help the child get better grades. That's wrong. It's to help the child get better. Get the parents and guardians involved in the child's educational process. And to know if he or she is doing bad or good in school. I'm not bad. I know what I'm doing. He just wanted me to fail, that's all. And you want us to believe that? Of course, you can try me if you want. Wow. That's nice to know. <sighs> well, because of time, I'm not going to give you something difficult. If you get it, then I will make sure you leave this court happy. Otherwise, you will not like my judgment. Bring it on. We are going to try out some spellings. Nigerian words, please. <laughs> <laughs> English words to be precise. I'm going to give you three spellings. If you get two out of it, then you pass. Then let's get started. What's your favorite food? Huh? Noodles. Spell it. Which one? Noodles. There are different brands. Which one do you want me to spell? I didn't ask you to spell per brand. Just spell noodles. That's easy. N U D U. S. <laughs> wow. Is that your final answer? Of course. What's your favorite sport? Football. Spell football. F U T B O L. Football. Good. What's your favorite TV channel? Disney Junior. Spell it. Can you try giving me something harder? I'm tired of answering cheap questions. I'm sorry, but just answer the last one. D Z I N I Disney. J U N E O Disney Junior. Yeah. Uh, is, is that your final answer? Do you have a better answer, Miss Daniela? Just asking. Be wise, Chimese. This Miss Danuela is wicked. If you are not careful, she will make you clean the entire street. By men looking at her, that will be her next plan. Hmm. It's lunch break. The court will reconvene in 30 minutes for my judgment. All right. Without wasting much time, I'll go straight to my judgment. Having heard what all parties involved had to say, henceforth, O.K. will not partake in his brother's assignment. Instead, your parents will take turns in handling your assignment. And you are going to do it under their supervision. What is not fair? I'm not done talking. Looking at your books and how poorly you perform, you have to repeat two classes. You're in primary six now. You have to go back to primary four. Yeah. What? That means two years and extra money. We are not here to raise children who do not know they are left from their right. We are supposed to be leaders of tomorrow and not dangers of tomorrow. Miss Danuela, don't you think you are taking this portion of yours too serious? I will never go back to primary four. Are you listening to yourself? What will my classmates say? They will laugh at me. Exactly. That's the punishment. If you do not want juniors in primary four to laugh at you, then you have to sit up. And I will give this standing order to your school to keep repeating you until you decide to work hard. Then I will change school. 
This is my verdict, and I'll make sure this verdict is published in newspapers. Any school that fails to comply will be penalized. Let's see how you escape. But my dad is a busy man. Your dad needs to know that there is something called family time. He should put that in his schedule, and that goes to your mom too. You are indeed a sadist. I will not forgive you for this. In fact, I'll stop going to school totally. Well, that's fine. I have to change your punishment to community service. Henceforth, you will clean the school environment and make it neat for children who truly want to study. Miss Daniela, have you been sent to destroy me? I don't wish to repeat class, and now you want me to be a cleaner in the school. That's a child abuse. Really? Should I change the punishment? Did I make a mistake coming here? Cause it looks like I have just shot myself in the foot. I, <laughs> I, I am fine with Promi 4. Just two years anyway. That's not wrong. Good. And as for you, okay, you are hereby mandated to report if anyone defies this order or else you will face your own punishment. Are we clear? Yes, Ms. Daniela. The court is adjourned. So tell us, what case have you brought before this court? Thank you. My name is Chelsea. I'm 10 years old. Just days ago, I was given a private lesson teacher. But guess what? She is just 17 years old. Who does that? She's barely 7 years older than I am and she wants to teach me. How much does she know? Trust me, I'm way more intelligent and smarter than she can ever be. What do you want from Daniela's court? My parents have refused to listen to my plea, and they say that she would only leave if she decides, but they will not ask her to. I want this court to ask her to leave so my parents can get someone older and more qualified. Have you tried listening to her to know if she's qualified or not? Miss Daniela, I'm not stupid to waste my time trying to find out what she knows. She's just a kid. What can she teach me? In fact, I really feel insulted by my parents for doing this. And what is the name of this teacher of yours? Enkiru. Can you imagine? Very primitive name. Who still bears such a name these days? For the fact that you share a name with a football club and a dry gin doesn't make Inkiri a bad name. It's an African name with a good meaning. Who cares? You'll have to care. By the way, what's the meaning of your name, Chelsea? I'm waiting. What's the meaning of your name? Is that why we are here? <laughs> <laughs> what is funny? Why are you people laughing? Chelsea is my name. I love it. I'm sure your names must be as old school as that of Enkiru. You made them laugh, yet you don't want them to laugh. Well, back to your complaint. May Enkiru please step forward. You heard what Chelsea said. What do you have to say in your defense? Miss Daniela, I may just be seven years older than she is, but I'm old and qualified enough to teach her because I'm done with my secondary school, which means that I've passed through her present level. Would you like to go on with the teaching or you would like to quit? That shouldn't be a decision to make. I am the complainant, so the court is supposed to hear me and ask me what I want. But this is not your father's city room. I'm sorry, Miss Chelsea. You don't decide what happens here. Miss Nkiru. Thank you, Miss Daniela. If this court would permit me, I would like to go ahead. Not just because of the money, but because Chelsea has a lot to learn. Really? If I ask you a few questions now, I'm sure you will fail. I'm sure I won't fail. It's like you want to disgrace yourself. There are kids here. They will laugh at you. Go on. 
O king, tell me why Princess Sophia is able to hear what the animals are saying. Because she has the enchanted magical amulet. Hmm. Which is my favorite cartoon? I don't know. You see? You see? She doesn't know anything. <coughs> She's hired to teach you and not to know your likes and dislikes. The question you ask her is irrelevant, hence invalid. I don't understand you, Miss Daniela. Why are you taking her side? I'm only standing with reason, Chelsea. Being fair to your punching for questions and answers. I will ask Inkiru here, your teacher, to set five questions. If you get three, then I'll agree that you're smart and intelligent enough to get an older and more qualified teacher. But if you fail, you will have to sit quietly and be taught by her. That's simple, Miss Daniela. Hmm. Fine. Inkiru, randomly come up with five questions. Let's see how smart and intelligent she is. Kira, are you ready with your questions? Yes, Miss Daniela. Chelsea? Like yesterday. Good. Let's begin. Spell hippopotamus. Hip what? What kind of question is that? I'm only 10. That animal is very big. I can't spell it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know the answer. I know the answer. But why such a big and ugly animal? Why are small ones like ant, dog, cat, at least just small enough for me to handle? I'm not an adult. I think you should ask something else. Spelling has nothing to do with the size of animals. It does. People should spell animals according to their age and grade. Me spelling an animal like that. Is both disrespectful and mischievous. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Thank you. Please change the question. But Mr. Don't Daniel worry, just change it. What are secondary colors? Oh, I'm still in primary school. What is my business with secondary school colors? Next question, please. <laughs> <laughs> You cannot avoid two questions. Remember, you have only three left, which means you have to answer all of them correctly in order to pass. You have avoided four questions already. If you refuse to answer the next question, I will be left with no choice than to pass my judgment. But it's not my fault. Not to worry. I will answer the next one. If x times 6 is equal to 18, find x. Objection! Objection overruled. But x is not missing. It's there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the question again. If x times 6 is equal to 18. Find x. That is what I am saying. If x is missing, then you should be able to find it because you were the last person to see it. I have not seen x today, so find it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think we are here to play? You know what? The court will go on break and resume in 10 minutes. This is your last chance, Chelsea. Are you ready? Very ready. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Good. There's a list of questions in wrapped papers. You'll pick one and the question it carries will read out to you. If you fail, I will go ahead and pass my judgment.
Do you have a problem choosing? Please don't waste the court's time. My life depends on it. Give me time. Number five. Mention two domestic pets you know. Would you smile all day or go straight and answer the question? What a simple question. Good for you. One, rat. Two, my mom. <laughs> Are you serious? Your mom? How? Because my dad always say, Joanna, you are a pest. Stop pestling my life. You want to kill me? <laughs> He says it all the time. Doesn't that mean she's a domestic pest? <laughs> Please read the question again. The question says, Mention to domestic pets. You know. Thank you. Did you hear that? Pets are not pests. But Miss always listen to every question attentively. <sighs> Having heard what all parties involved had to say, it's obvious that Chelsea needs some real tutoring. And I'm sure Inkiru has the potential to do justice to that. Inkiru remains your teacher. Any report of rebellion from you will call for a revisit of this case. And trust me, you will not like the punishment I will give to you. But Miss Dan This is my judgment. Let's begin with the third case, please. The third case for today is between Ife Sinachi Lambert and Dora Lambert. May Ife Sinachi Lambert please step forward to the witness box. Thank you. My name is Ife Sinachi Lambert. I reported my younger sister Dora because she burnt my uniform deliberately and denied, even though we are the only ones at home. She plugged the pressing iron to electricity and abandoned it on my uniform. It's not the first time she's destroyed my dress. I want justice. Where is Dora Lambert? There she is. Dora Lambert, kindly step forward to the witness box. Ife Sinachi here reported a case against you. She said you deliberately burnt her screen uniform after abandoning a pressing iron that was blocked to electricity on it. What do you have to say in your defense? This is why it's not good to be good. People always be good with evil. <laughs> Dora, could you stop with the tears? You're here to grant justice if you're innocent and I don't understand. I always accuse when all I ever do is try to make my sister happy. It hurts. Don't mind her. Don't mind her. She's shedding crocodile tears. That is what she does each time mom or dad is about to spank her. Dora, please stop crying. <laughs> The court to go on break. <laughs> now, let me make this clear, Miss Dora. I will not tolerate any interruptions during my questioning again. I'm sorry. It's just that I wonder why good people are always falsely accused. 
Please proceed with your explanation of what transpired the day her school uniform got burnt. I was only trying to be a good sister. By burning her uniform? No! I didn't burn her uniform. Why would I burn her uniform when I'm not evil? But she said she saw you. Yes, she saw me with the pressing iron, but I didn't burn her uniform. She was sleeping and school was resumed on Monday, so I chose to assist. Did you know how to press clothes before then? No. Then why did you choose to experiment with her school uniform? Is there anything wrong in trying to help Miss Daniela? How did you do it? How else do they press clothes? Answer the question. You plug the present and... I know how it's done. How did her school uniform get burnt? I plugged the pressing iron. I wanted to get a cup of water. I wanted to pour it on the uniform. You wanted to sprinkle? No. The uniform was rough, so I wanted to soak it with enough water. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? Nine. My sister is ten. You would have been electrocuted. Water and electricity don't go together. You're supporting her. I didn't burn the uniform. I know how to press clothes perfectly. And you became perfect without practice. By just looking at someone who irons clothes, right? <laughs> if it's not you, do you have another school uniform? No. She spoiled the first uniform when she soaked it together with colored clothes without my permission. And now she's destroyed the second one. Is your father aware of this? Our parents traveled and left the nanny with us. And the nanny is ill. No one believes me. I didn't burn the uniform. You placed the pressing iron on the uniform, correct? Yes, but I didn't place the hot part on it. Then who did, since your nanny wasn't around when it happened? Rats. <laughs> Dora, do you think this is a playground? I'm serious. She had crumbs of donuts in her pocket. So? There are big smart rats that run around our house. No rat trap can ever get them home. Maybe they hit the iron when looking for the donuts in her uniform. <laughs> Order! Miss Dora, judging by the evidence and all you said, you had no idea how to press clothes, so you decided to use your sister's uniform for the experiment. You would have been electrocuted. I knew you wouldn't believe me. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. You would hold back those crocodile tears until I'm done. You don't become an expert in something just because you saw someone doing it. You practice under supervision and I didn't burn the uniform. I don't know if God burned. Maybe the rat ran on the uniform and I saw you. Oh, mm -hmm. Miss Dora, next time you interrupt my speech, you will be fined. Now, I want you to think about the consequence of your action. Your sister doesn't have any uniform and you have two. She's going to be punished in school for a crime she didn't commit. Do you feel good about that? Go on. It wasn't the rats. I just wanted to impress her. It wasn't intentional. Now that the rats are off the story, I'll pass my judgment. Dora, you'll have to write an apology letter to your sister. Henceforth, snacks, sweets and juice won't be given to you by your parents and visitors for a month. But you can't do it without snacks and sweets. I'm not done. Since you're almost of the same body size, 
you have to give her one of your uniforms and the money you've been saving from the 500 naira daily feeding expenses at school. 6,000 naira will be used to get her a new school uniform. But I've been saving that money to get a new toy. This is my verdict. All right. Call out the next case. The next case is between Rachel Kingsley and her cousin Michael Okoro. Will Rachel please proceed to the witness box? Miss Rachel, please proceed. First of all, I'm not missing. I'm here. I beg your pardon. You called me missing, Rachel. I'm not missing. Why would you call me missing when I'm here with you? Can't you all see me? Do I look missing? <laughs> <laughs> Miss and missing are two different words. A married woman is addressed as Mrs. while an unmarried woman is addressed as Miss. Then you can't call me Miss. Because I'm not a woman. I'm a child. Call me Rachel. Please proceed to the witness box and state your case. Thank you. I am Rachel, and that is my cousin. I reported him because he got me into trouble. We both went to a compound to pluck oranges. The owner of the oranges came out with a stick to hit us. We both ran. Then he went behind my back to report me to the woman, claiming I was the only one who plucked oranges after he had eaten everything. In other words, you both stole oranges from someone's tree. Not still. We plucked. But the tree wasn't yours, was it? All trees come from God, and I'm a child of God, so the tree also belongs to me. <laughs> Can we focus on punishing my cousin? After I have examined this case, I'll decide whom to punish. Please proceed. May Miss Caroline please step forward to the witness box. You're Caroline, right? Yes, Miss Daniela. I'm Caroline Okawa. Please take off your cap here in court. Who are you to do, maybe? I'm her nanny, Miss Daniela. <sighs> you may be here reported a case against you. She said you've been feeding her with bad food, junk as she calls it. According to her, this is because she don't know how to cook. She also said she wants to cook for herself, but you wouldn't let her. What do you have to say in your defense? Miss Daniela, I have been her nanny for years. I have been... So why the change all of a sudden? She claims she wants to prepare her food for but herself. But she's too young for that. She's clueless about what to cook and how to cook. Why would I allow her cook when she would only burn down the house? Finding a job is very difficult. And I can't afford to lose this one, Miss Daniela. I see. How old are you? I'm 10 years old. Your cousin has agreed to the allegation, but he said that you forced him. What do you have to say about that? I didn't force him. I only told him that if he didn't follow me, I would tell his father about the expensive mug he broke and hid at the backyard. What does that sound like to you, Rachel? It's called business. I don't understand why you are blaming me for threatening to tell the truth. He should be punished. Hasten and punish him. In my chamber, justice is served, fair and without emotions. Exactly. That's why you should punish him, without pity. And you as well. Why me? 
forcing your cousin to join you in a bad act by threatening him and stealing. He ate all the oranges we plucked, while I ate 12 hot painful strokes. Look at my palm, so red and sore. Why should I be punished? <laughs> <laughs> The court will go on recess. When we reconvene, I'll give my verdict. Before I give my judgment, Rachel, would you like to say anything? Thank you, Miss Daniela. I worked hard to get those oranges. I climbed the tree while he was just standing, waiting with the baskets. I got stung by ants. I got lashed by the owner of the tree. All for nothing. I want justice. That's all I have to say. And you will get it. Michael, do you have anything to say? Thank you, Miss Daniela. I didn't do anything bad. She forced me to steal, so I took the oranges as payment for my work. It's not easy to be a watch boy while your friend is stealing. That's all I have to say. Both Rachel and Michael have valid reasons for seeking justice. But, both of you are at fault. Firstly, taking what doesn't belong to you without permission is wrong. Secondly, forcing Michael to do something by threatening to expose him is also wrong. It's called blackmail. Hence, both of you will be subjected to one week of cleaning the compound of the person whose oranges you stole simultaneously. Ha! And as for you, Michael, while you sweep, you will fetch and fill her drums of water once every three days within the week of your punishment. Ha! This is my verdict. You all are welcome to Daniela's court. Please be seated. Call the first case, please. The first case is between Miss Anna George and her class teacher, Miss Kessna Ojas. May Anne please proceed to the witness box and state your case. Thank you. I'm Anne George, eight years old, and I'm reporting my class chair for letting me in class and calling me a dollar after she asked a question and I gave her the correct answer. Is your teacher present in this court? There she is. Her name is Miss Kessna Rogers. Would Miss Kessna Rogers please proceed to the witness box? Your pupil has just reported, claiming you humiliated her and called her a dollard in class. I didn't humiliate her. She humiliated herself. What happened? Thank you. Yesterday, I was teaching the class about wild and domestic animals, so I asked the class to mention two domestic animals they can find in their compound. She raised her hand, but I ignored because she always answers my questions incorrectly. She insisted, so I pointed at her. Can you imagine? She said two domestic animals they can find in their compound are lions and bats. <laughs> I told her lions and bats can't be domestic animals, but she argued when she found out her classmates were laughing at her, she walked out of the class and I got summoned. So you're saying you never called her a dollar and you never used a degrading word? No, no I never did. Miss Enne, your teacher said she never called you a dollard. But she did! Did she say it out loud for everyone to hear? No, but I said it! <laughs> I said father! I'm not 
not joking. If you saw eyes when I said the correct answer. <laughs> I'm hot. I'm in pain. And if you were unjustly treated, you would get justice in my court. I can't wait. Well, you have to, okay? Now tell us, why did you mention lions and bats as domestic animals? Simple. My teacher said domestic animals are animals we can find in our compound. So, have you ever seen a lion or a bat in your compound before? Yes, a lot of lions and bats. <laughs> <laughs> Did you tell your teacher where exactly you saw them? Was it in the bathroom, kitchen? No, I refused to tell her because she's too proud. <laughs> I'm curious to know where you saw them. In my room! <laughs> I don't understand. Wait, can I show you something? Go ahead. It's in my bag. I need to go and get it. You really seem excited, Miss Enne. I am. Today, my teacher will not was scared and will regret calling me a doll at her eyes. So, what do you intend to show the school? I kept the surprise. It will be my final punch. It's proof that lions and bats are domestic animals and can be found in the room and soon in this court. <laughs> Do you intend to scare this court? No, but I told you, lions and bats are in my father's house, so I brought them here. <laughs> she's sounding like she's about to perform a dangerous magic. I should this kid Look at not them. <laughs> This is Lion, this is Bat. They have been in my father's house on the wall for years, so they are part of my family. Miss Edna, please tender your evidence. Edna? Like, seriously? I'm sure they were laughing at her because I just proved that wrong. Savvy? They were laughing at this, Ene. This is a picture and not an animal. But there are animals in the picture, so they exist. And the picture is mine, so they exist in my house. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. Why do you say they don't? They do. I've been living with them for years, so they're part of my family. <laughs> <laughs> they can't breathe. They can't move. Or have you ever seen them eating? But I know. Have you seen the lion in this picture? Raw or the bat? Click. No, but... Living things sleep, breathe, eat, excrete waste and they die. So you're saying because they don't eat or breathe that they don't exist? Yes, they don't exist. 
These animals were snapped in the jungle or the zoo. Which means your teacher was correct. It's wrong of you to sue her. I sued her because she looks like my older sister. She's not as big as my mother. <laughs> <laughs> She's a representative of your school. Suing her means you're suing your school and it's disrespectful. Now you would have to apologize to her. But I'm the one who was laughed at. It doesn't matter. You're going to do the right thing by apologizing because you're a good girl, aren't you? I am. Good. Now apologize. Miss Kessina, please, I'm sorry. And I'm sorry the class left that to you. Henceforth, I'll make up time to explain things better to you when we air, okay? Yes, ma'am. That being done, I don't see any reason to continue this case. Case dismissed! Calling on the sixth and final case for today between Becky Benson and her caregiver, Miss Choma. Becky Benson, please proceed to the witness box. Thank you, Miss Danella. My name is Becky Benson, and I reported my caregiver, Choma, after she refused to give me the money given to me as reward. Claiming she spent it. How much are we talking about? 3,500 Naira. You sued your caregiver over 3,500 Naira. Isn't that enough money to sue someone? Miss Choma, please proceed to the witness box. Do you understand what she just said? I do, Miss Daniela. What do you have to say in your defense? She's just being ridiculous. Hmm? I mean it. Who does that? How could she steal me to cut for the money we both used? She's ungrateful. Stop using degrading remarks in my court, please. Stick to the question. I'm sorry, Miss Daniela, but I feel insulted. What is 3,500 Naira compared to what I've given to this heartless girl? I won't repeat myself again. Keep sentiments aside and tell this honorable court what transpired between you and Becky. She's an ingrate. I said stick to the... You know what? The court will go on recess and reconvene after two hours. I've had enough annoying cases for today. All right! Before you begin, I would advise you to keep sentiments aside. Is that understood? Yes, Miss Daniela. Go on. When Becky was seven, her uncle gave her 3,500 Naira as reward for her coming first in class. She asked me to hold the cash and I agreed. Now, two years after, she's demanding that I give her the money. Imagine, two years after. <laughs> If I heard you correctly, she asked you to keep the money, right? Who saves 3,500 Naira for two years in a country where foodstuffs prices inflate every day? I asked her to keep the money. I need it now. Come and drag it out of my hair. Quiet, both of you. Becky, do not interrupt while I'm questioning her. You would have your time to speak. Go on, Chioma. Thank you. 
After I was given the money, Becky demanded that I buy her a Cinderella doll. It cost me a thousand naira. She demanded for ice cream, snacks, and even toys over the years. How does she still expect that I'll still keep that money for her after two years? I didn't ask you to use my money to buy those toys. It's my father's money. But most of it was from my savings. Becky, if you speak without being asked to again, I'll have you punished. Chioma, do you have anything to say? No, except that it's unfair for her to bring me here for a pet sum that we used over the years. That's all I have to say. Miss <laughs> Becky. Why did you suddenly request for the money after two years? I wanted to bring the baby doll, so I remembered I had given her some money to keep for me. If only I knew she'd deceive me, so she used the money for herself. So after two years, you suddenly remembered you gave someone money to keep. Not just anyone, but your caregiver. And you didn't think about the expenses she incurred, taking care of you. Banks save money, giving to them for up to ten years. Banks don't buy you toys, snacks, or baby dolls. But with the... Miss Chioma? Yes, Miss Daniela. I understand her father keeps money for her upkeep before he travels. Yes. He leaves us with 20,000 naira each month and gives me specific instructions on how to use the money. Can you get me the list of the instructions? Chioma, can you write down the list of everything you've bought for her with your money? Can you? But I can't remember everything. Write down the ones you both can remember. she didn't buy. Everything she writes in there is going to be verified. Becky, I want you to please confirm everything I call. If it's true, say yes. If it's not, say no. Are you ready? A visit to the mall. Yes, but that's all I want to hear. Shawarma on your just concluded birthday after the main birthday party organized by your father ended. Yes, but I didn't finish the shawarma. <laughs> Order! Yogurt and chocolate candies bought when you refused to go to school last Tuesday. But that's from the money for my daily upkeep. And how much is the money for your daily upkeep? My father said it's 2,000 naira. These yogurt and candies cost 1,600 naira. You ate food worth 2,000 naira that same day that had chicken, fried fish, and salad. Yes, but can you stop mentioning them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You eat a lot, Becky. Hmm. Ice cream, burger, hmm. barbecue fish, 
Pineapple juice. Becky, you drink at least five super-sized packs of juice in a day. The total of what she has spent from her savings is 12,000 naira. And that's not all, just the ones I could remember. Becky, after you've cleared the bill of 12,000 naira, then she's going to pay back your 3,500 naira. Where will I get 12,000 naira from? I'm just a kid. Becky, you would have thought about that before suing her. You have five days to raise that money and pay. After paying her her 12,000 naira, then she's going to pay back your 3,500 naira. And that is my judgment. I don't want the money anymore. Why? Collect it. And the tumor, please, take the 3,500. I don't want it. But I want to give it to you. But I don't want the money anymore. Please, I don't want Becky, where are you going to? Get back here, security! <laughs> on the sixth and final case for today between Becky Benson and her caregiver Miss Choma. Becky Benson, please proceed to the witness box. Thank you, Miss Danella. My name is Becky Benson and I reported my caregiver Choma after she refused to give me the money given to me as reward claiming she spent it. How much are we talking about? 3,500 Naira. You sued your caregiver over 3,500 Naira. Isn't that enough money to sue someone? Miss Choma, please proceed to the witness box. Do you understand what she just said? I do, Miss Daniela. What do you have to say in your defense? She's just being ridiculous. Hmm? I mean it. Who does that? How could she sue me to cut for the money we both used? She's ungrateful. Stop using degrading remarks in my court, please. Stick to the question. I'm sorry, Miss Daniela, but I feel insulted. What is 3,500 Naira compared to what I've given to this heartless girl? I won't repeat myself again. Keep sentiments aside and tell this honorable court what transpired between you and Becky. She's an ingrate. I said stick to the... You know what? The court will go on recess and reconvene after two hours. I've had enough annoying cases for today. Alright! Before you begin, I would advise you to keep sentiments aside. Is that understood? Yes, Miss Daniela. Go on. When Becky was seven, her uncle gave her 3,500 Naira as reward for her coming first in class. She asked me to hold the cash and I agreed. Now, two years after, she's demanding that I give her the money. Imagine, two years after. <laughs> If I heard you correctly, she asked you to keep the money, right? Who saves 3,500 Naira for two years in a country where foodstuffs prices inflate every day? I asked her to keep the money. I need it now. Come and drag it out of my hair. Quiet, both of you. 
Becky, do not interrupt while I'm questioning her. You would have your time to speak. Go on, Chioma. Thank you. After I was given the money, Becky demanded that I buy her a Cinderella doll. It cost me a thousand naira. She demanded for ice cream, snacks, and even toys over the years. How does she still expect that I'll still keep that money for her after two years? I didn't ask you to use my money to buy those toys. It's my father's money. But most of it was from my savings. Becky, if you speak without being asked to again, I'll have you punished. Chioma, do you have anything to say? No, except that it's unfair for her to bring me here for a pet sum that we used over the years. That's all I have to say. Miss <laughs> Becky, why did you suddenly request for the money after two years? I wanted to buy a new baby doll, so I remembered I had given her some money to keep for me. If only I knew she'd deceive me, so she used the money for herself. So after two years, you suddenly remembered you gave someone money to keep. Not just anyone, but your caregiver. And you didn't think about the expenses she incurred, taking care of you. Banks save money, giving to them for up to 10 years. Banks don't buy you toys, snacks, or baby dolls. But with the... Miss Chioma. Yes, Miss Daniela. I understand her father keeps money for her upkeep before he travels. Yes. He leaves us with 20,000 naira each month and gives me specific instructions on how to use the money. Can you get me the list of the instructions? Miss Chioma, can you write down the list of everything you've bought for her with your money? Can you? But I can't remember everything. Write down the ones you both can remember. she didn't buy. Everything she writes in there is going to be verified. Becky, I want you to please confirm everything I call. If it's true, say yes. If it's not, say no. Are you ready? A visit to the mall. Yes, but... That's all I want to hear. Shawarma on your just concluded birthday after the main birthday party organized by your father ended. Yes, but I didn't finish the shawarma. <laughs> Order! Yogurt and chocolate candies bought when you refused to go to school last Tuesday. But that's from the money for my daily upkeep. And how much is the money for your daily upkeep? My father said it's 2,000 naira. These yogurt and candies cost 1,600 naira. You ate food worth 2,000 naira that same day that had chicken, fried fish, and salad. Yes, but can you stop mentioning them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! You eat a lot, Becky. Hmm. 
ice cream, burger, hmm, barbecue fish, pineapple juice, Becky, you drink at least five super-sized packs of juice in a day. <laughs> The total of what she has spent from her savings is 12,000 naira. And that's not all. Just the ones I could remember. Becky, after you've cleared the bill of 12,000 naira, then she's going to pay back your 3,500 naira. Where will I get 12,000 naira from? I'm just a kid. Becky, you would have thought about that before suing her. You have five days to raise that money and pay. After paying her her 12,000 naira, then she's going to pay back your 3,500 naira. And that is my judgment. I don't want the money anymore. Why? Collect it. And the trauma, please, take the 3,500. I don't want it. But I want to give it to you. But I don't want the money anymore. Please, I don't want... Becky, where are you going to? Get back here. Security! <laughs> Let's begin with the first case, please. The first case for today is a prominent one. It's between a maiden and a princess, Princess Ozioma Okoye and Miss Valentina. Would Miss Valentina please proceed to the witness box? Thank you, Miss Daniela. I reported Ozioma because she's responsible for my mother losing her job as a palace chef. She and her friends tampered with the meal my mother prepared for the king and the royal guests, and my mother got sacked and chased from the palace. When you say tampered, what do you mean? My mother just got a new job as a palace chef. She was instructed to prepare a meal with which the king would entertain his guests. I saw her prepare the meal. It was delicious when she gave me meat inside to taste. Suddenly, when she served the royal guests, Everyone started screaming, Pepe! <coughs> Pepe! I can't get fire! Pepe! Stop laughing! Order! Even the king screamed from the Pepe. My mother doesn't cook extremely Pepe food. Someone tampered with the meal, and that person is the wicked princess over there. Refrain from name calling in my court, Miss Valentina. Would Princess Ozioma please proceed to the witness box? Did you tamper with the meal as she accused you of? No. I would never consider being mischievous to the extent of poisoning my father and his guests. I'm innocent. Don't be fooled by her calm appearance. She did it. I didn't. Well, of all the maidens in your palace, did she pick you out as the one responsible for the unfortunate circumstance? I don't know. She was playing with her friend, the daughter of the real guest. They went into the kitchen and poured the jar of pepper into the already dished meal, while my mother and other servants were setting the table. Miss Valentina, did you witness this? No, but I know that's what she did. So you didn't see her do it? Yes. And you never had a dream where you saw her doing it? No, why all these questions? <laughs> <laughs> you are accusing someone of ruining a very important day at the royal house and you have no vital proof. 
Someone told me. Who? She's not important. I decide who's important or not in this trial. Who told you, Valentina? Who told you, Valentina? I, I promise not to reveal her identity. If I do, her mother will lose her new job. Are you your mother's only child? Yes. Then you must feel really hurt by what happened. Yes. She was sacked and I had to follow her back to her single room that is always hot and filled with wicked hungry mosquitoes. After enjoying one week of sleeping under AC, bathing with warm water, eating chicken and drinking juice. <laughs> You get her job back. No more secrets, Valentina. Who told you? That's her, Miss Kelechi. And what's your relationship with Princess Oziyama? Kelechi. Go on. Ma? Your relationship with Princess Oziyama? Medin. My mother cooks for her father. When did your mother start working as a palace chef? When the other chef that was employed the same time with her cooked peppery food that made everyone at the dining scream and drank gallons of water. She said you told her that you saw Princess Ozioma tampering with the already dished meal. Correct? Please answer the question. Is that correct? No. No? I mean, it looked like her. Do you have a sight problem? No. So you couldn't identify whom you saw? I told you not to tell them. I told you. Why can't you keep secret? Miss Kelechi! I'm the one you addressed, not her. Did you see the princess tampering with the food when it was dished? Yes. No. Stop with the jokes and answer the question. I don't know what to say. I'm enjoying the bed, the AC, the chicken and the juice. I don't want to lose them. I don't want to go back to that our wretched house. And if I say the truth, I will. What's the truth? Nothing. Kelechi, what's the truth? Nothing. I'm not a question! Uh, Nothing. I'll hand you over to the cane mistress and she'll flog and spank you until I ask her not to, if you don't answer the question. Mother hates Valentina's mom. <laughs> she said Valentina's mom was a competition and wanted her out of the palace. <laughs> she told me not to be friends with Valentina. <laughs> so when I saw Valentina's mom cooking, I decided to tamper with her food. <laughs> So you poured pepper in your already dished meal. <laughs> Today's case portrays what damage recruiting your child to become an enemy to your enemy causes. Miss Kelechi, you've revealed to us that you ruined the king's meal because your mother hates the king's chef. By that singular act, she lost her job and was chased with her child out of the palace. 
It was my mother that told me not to be friends with her. She told me if Valentina's mom remains in the palace, we may be sent out of the palace. That's why I did it to save my mother. And you implicated an innocent princess while doing that. That's another crime added to the first. Here is my judgment. Princess Ozioma, you are hereby discharged and acquitted. And as for you, Valentina, your mother will get her job back as the palace chef, and you both will move back to the palace. And as for you, Kelechi, you would spend a month working for Valentina's mother without compensation. Ha! When you're done, you go live with your mother with the room you've been avoiding. I can't go back to that room. It's headquarters of bed bugs and mosquitoes. When it rains, mom always think I pee on the bed. Princess Ozoma, please plead on my behalf. I can't go back to that room. Please, please, I'm begging you, Princess Ozoma, please plead on my behalf. I don't want to go back there. I don't want to go back there. Pardon her, please. Miss Valentina, it was wrong of you to accuse and drag someone to court on the basis of mere suspicion. You would have to apologize to Princess Ozioma to dissuade her from pressing charges. Otherwise, please, Princess Ozioma, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Apology accepted. This is my judgment. Proceed with the next case. The second case for today is between Stanley Michael and Patrick Michael. Will Stanley Michael please step forward to the witness box? Go on. Thank you, Miss Daniel. I'm Stanley Michael. I reported my younger brother for stealing the money I hid in my school bag and for setting the bag on fire. He saw the 5,000 naira our dad gave as payment for my school excursion. Where is your younger brother? Please step forward to the witness box. Your brother accused you of stealing 5,000 naira from his bag. According to him, the money was meant for his school excursion. What's your defense? Can you narrate vividly what happened that day? My brother is lying. What happened that fateful day? I don't remember, but I know he's lying, and he knows it too. That's for the court to decide. Can you recall what happened and... Let him tell us how I stole his money and burnt his bag. Patrick! Sorry, Miss Daniela. That day, I was in the room sleeping. When he suddenly came in, I hit me hard and accused me of setting his bag on fire. I was shocked when I saw his bag burning. Was there a candle or another source of light in the room? Yes. Power supply had just been interrupted and the lit candle was in the room. Could it be that you hid the candle while sleeping? I couldn't have. Because I don't usually run on the bed while sleeping. That's why I was surprised when I saw the candle on the bag. Then how did the candle get to the bag? That's what I'll be saying. I don't know. What about the money? He said he kept it inside the bag. Did you see it? Yes. No. No? I I mean, I was there when Dad gave him the money before going to work. But I didn't take it. Don't mind him, Miss Daniela. My brother is lying. He rose a lot while sleeping. One day he rose from the bed and fell on my plate of food. Which means he was sleeping when the bag went up in flames. No, he's lying. He stole the money, set the bag on fire and pretended to be sleeping. What did he do when you hit him? 
He started shouting and running. I know he doesn't like me, but stealing my money and burning my bag is unbelievable. Why did you say he doesn't like you? Actions speak louder than voice, Miss Daniela. Do you know, he wants pot salt in my tea. <laughs> A joke. Patrick one day put his finger in his nose and rubbed on my lips and he had tata. The most annoying of it all, we both were sleeping one day and he slapped me hard. I woke up and found him pretending to be fighting with someone in the dream. <laughs> my chick endured his prints for days. <clears throat> Is there a witness? What's your name and relationship with Stanley? Thank you. My name is Peter. I'm a friend and neighbor to Stanley. I'm the one that poured water on the bag. Go on. That day, I was hungry, so I met Stanley and we ate snacks. Then I went to the room to knock. I saw the door opened and the bag badly burnt, so I ran. Who was in the room? It was Patrick. He was holding a candle. And where was Stanley? I don't know. He's not there. But you said you met Stanley. What? No! What I said was... I didn't see him on through the fire incident. But you said you met Stanley and you ate snacks with him. No! It was... It was after I saw Patrick sleeping and the bag was on fire. That was when I went to look for Stanley. Yes. But you initially said you saw Patrick holding a lit candle. Did I? Wait. What I said was... Um... Patrick was... Yes, he was pouring the candle was on the bag. Yes. Look, if I find out your line, you'll be severely dealt with. And I'll make sure the cane master does justice to your buttocks. Peter, someone is about to be punished for a crime. If you're hiding the truth, spit it. Otherwise, I will not be merciful. Peter! Patrick is innocent. <laughs> Stanley set the bag on fire. We needed to buy a pair of game pads, so he told me he would use the money his dad gave him for their school excursion. That's a lie, yo. Don't mind him, Miss Daniela. He's lying. It's true. He set the bag on fire while his brother was sleeping. He told me he saw someone do the same thing in a Nigerian movie to cover a secret. Sometimes, he steals his father's money and blames it on Patrick. Don't mind him, mo. In my court? Security! Security! Peter, are you okay? <coughs> yes. If you dare lay a finger on him, you would receive 48 lashes before I continue with this case. Go on, Peter. We bought chicken and juice with the money. He even gave me 500 and asked me to lie to cover him up. So why are you now exposing him? Because... I feel sorry for Patrick. He has suffered enough for crimes he didn't commit. This is not the first time my conscience started to judge me. I'm sorry, Patrick. Stanley, 
I find your act callous. Implicating your brother when you set the bag on fire to cover up for the money you took? This is soulless! Patrick is hereby discharged and acquitted. You will receive a compensation for the defamation done to your character. And as for you, Stanley, you would be suspended from school for two weeks. During that period, you would weed the grasses and keep the environment clean. Also, you would write an apology letter to your brother and parents. This is my judgment. Our first case for today is between Helen Unwafo and her sister Elena Unwafo. Helen has accused her sister of denying her her rights and making her look way older than her age. May Helen please take a stand in the witness box. Helen? If I may speak, Miss Daniela, my name is Elena, the defendant. My sister is yet to arrive the court. I guess she's finding it difficult to walk down here. <laughs> why is that, if I may ask? I don't know. She reported me to the court, so I'm wondering why she isn't here yet. The court is going to wait for some minutes. If she doesn't arrive, then we'll have to adjourn. I would advise to adjourn this case. She sure not get in here in the next 20 minutes. Which means you know something we don't. Speculations. I see. This court is willing to wait for her. Let's go for some minutes break while we wait for her. If in the next five minutes, Helen Uanfa doesn't come to this court, then I'll be left with no choice than to treat the next case. Like I said, I don't know ready, let's not waste more time. If you speak without being asked to again, I will charge you with contempt of court. Sorry, Miss Daniela. Better. Are you and why are you here? My name is Helen the Plaintiff. Helen Uafo, why are you dressed like that? Well, according to my sister, the court works with proof. So let you come wearing my. Well, now that you're here, please take a stand in the witness box and state your case. And that was a little. I need to rest. I will pass out before I finish setting my case. The court has no time. We've waited for long already. You have to. I was just going to be accused of murder. Shoot, 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 shoot. First of all, Miss Lack, please give me water to drink. Please give me snacks too. And if you can add an energy drink to that, I believe that can save my life. Then we can talk. <sighs> Are you now ready to state your case? I am, but is it possible to take a nap for like an hour? 
after a meal like this, a little knife will refresh me. <laughs> <laughs> if you shut your eyes, I will charge you for wasting the court's time. You have up to the count of five to get to the witness box. One, two, three, fine. But even if I want to, I can't be there in five counts. Give me time and I will be there. <laughs> now that you're here, tell us what issue you have with your sister, Elena Umafu. Well, like I said, I am the proof and she's my elder sister. And my parents are too busy that they hardly know what's happening. She's supposed to take care of me and use the money given to her by her parents to buy me new clothes and other things. But instead, she makes me wear her clothes and uses the money to buy new things for herself. So what do you want from this court? I want my rights back, my right to wear new clothes, my size. That is all I wish. So you decided to dress like this to prove what you're saying? Yes, since the court works with proof. So I decided to come wearing mine. May Elena Umanfo please step forward to the witness box. You've been so eager to speak ever since you arrived. You have the floor now. Defend yourself. First, she has no proof that those clothes belong to me. Again, she just might have decided to wear these clothes to implicate and set me up. Else, why would she be dressing like this? I think my parents to allow her dress like this and be quiet. So what do you plead? Not guilty, Miss Daniela. Do you have a proof that she's lying? Yes, I came to court with her actual clothes to prove she's lying. Please tender your evidence. Thank you, Miss Daniela. Hey, hey! What are my clothes doing here, Sister Lena? Those are my clothes. Give them back to me. Give me! Give me! I die in my court! Give me! Who are you, little one? My name is Tina, Miss Danela. Miss Danela, you look beautiful in your clothes. But why give me my clothes? Too? They look as beautiful as yours. I know, darling. But what I don't understand is why your sister Elena brought your clothes instead of Helen's. Elena, would you please answer that question? My kid sister is mistaken. These are not her clothes. Is she mistaken or are you trying to deceive the court? Those clothes are not mine. They belong to Tina. Sister Lena, why are you lying? Why do you want to take my clothes away and make me dress like Helen? Please, give me back my clothes. I'm not part of this case. Fine. There are things that are not worth arguing. Helen, you have to try on these clothes and show this court what it looks like. No way! She's going to tear my clothes and I'll not allow it. Nothing will go wrong, darling. Just allow her to try it on. We need to be sure that these clothes aren't hers. Don't you trust me, Miss Anella? I, I do, sweetheart. But for the benefit of the doubt I want to give Elena, please let's do this. Fine, but you have to promise me you give me a new clothes if this one gets torn. Promise. Pinky promise. Pinky promise. Helen, please go and try this clothes on. It's 
obvious that this clothes don't belong to Helen. And Elena has lied to the court and needs to be punished for that. She's my younger sister. I should wear my clothes. Why don't we need to buy new clothes when we still have the old ones? You are far older than I am. How then do you think your clothes would fit me? I need my own clothes, but that is all I wish. Elena, you have no right to deny her the right of having new clothes. Especially since your parents are the ones giving you money for it. I'll have to speak with them to make those purchases themselves and not to give you the money anymore. Promise, Daniela. No buts. She's your sister, yet you make her dress like an orphan and see nothing wrong in that. Well, looking at what I'm going to do with you, you're a teenager, right? 17 years old. Good. For the next one month, you report to this court daily to clean and mop. And we stand by the door before each case starts to welcome everyone. And the clothes you will be wearing will be seven times your size. No way! This is not fair! And what you did to Helen wasn't fair either. You will have to feel the same way she has been feeling all this well. I'll speak to your parents about it. This is my judgment. Not so fast, Mr. Nella. My clothes. The clerk will hand them over to you. No compensation. My sister was made to wear my clothes. And I'm sure she has expanded them. I need to be compensated. You said you like my dress, right? Yes. Then I'll make sure I get something like this your size. And send it over to your house. Am I supposed to trust you, Miss Daniela? Of course. Then if you not keep to your promise, I'll take you to court. <laughs> I won't fail you. Yes, Miss Daniela. You're welcome. This is my judgment. Helen, the case is over. Can I have the clothes you are wearing? Of course. It's a beautiful thing to know that when you have case in the city, there's only one place to go. Daniela's call. It's so wonderful to see that she is capable to give you all the judgment you need. Oh. All rise and stand up. This is Daniela's call. Stand up in Daniela's home. Her judgment is final. Decision is so strong.